Welcome back guys, it's Israel. EF Core 10 arrives in November 2025, and with it right around the corner, with the preview already available, let's go over the full release notes of all the awesome new features and tweaks coming in EF Core 10. But really quick, I wanna give a shout out to all my channel members. If you wanna see your names here, as well as get access to all the code from all the videos on my channel, click the link in the description or join button on my profile and send an email to this email with the code that you want access to. But now, into the EF Core 10 release notes. All right guys, so we are at the release notes for EF Core 10. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to try and explain everything as clearly, what stuff you need to pay attention to, what stuff maybe isn't as important, what stuff might be more common, and so on. So let's uh, go through these release notes. So first section here are going to be changes for Azure SQL and SQL Server integration with EF Core. So first things first is going to be full integration with the vector data type. And some of you might be asking, what is the vector data type? Well, they are essentially a list of floating point numbers. Basically, they are data points represented as a JSON array, and they can be used for machine learning or semantic search. And like I said, they're stored as floating point numbers. So essentially, that data type has now been added in. So you can now actually add it into your EF core, and you can actually work with those database columns uh, in your database. So we can see something like here, you have your SQL vector and it's float because that's the type of numbers that's in there. Uh, coming down here, you can now obviously save things to columns that are of that data type. And then we have this vector distance right here. The vector distance function allows the calculation of similar vectors. So right here, basically you are able to calculate the similarities based on these data points. And you are able to get similar blocks by not using just specific static strings, you're now using these numbers that represent other things and they are common and it's a different way of filtering or searching or things of that nature because now you're using these statistics. It's, you know, getting more into that machine learning aspect of thinking with everything. And some of you might be asking, when will I ever use this? I don't work in machine learning or AI and that's completely fair. I know I won't be using it, but it's good to know that that data type exists now and the addition of vectors as well as they have now added support for semantic search and full text search when we get to the NoSQL section um, of this with Cosmos DB, which I'll scroll to right in a second. Um, but basically it's just allowing your code, your data to be usable with large language models as well as these different types of searches that aren't your regular typical searches, right? That uses actual floating point list of numbers. And before I change the subject too much, I want to go down to the Cosmos DB section because they also do something similar where they've now added full text search support as well as hybrid search. So it basically is just a way of enhancing when you query a property, a database, whatever it may be. It's just a way to enhance the way you query and interact with your data. And if you guys actually do work with these data types, with this type of search functionality, definitely go deeper into this you know, article. I will have it linked in the description so you guys can go further into it if it's something that's more relevant to you guys in your space, in your job, whatever that may be. Well, the next thing coming in EF Core 10 is that it's now fully supported, the JSON data type. So what does that mean? If you guys didn't know, SQL now allows you to have columns that are of the type JSON. So it's not only a no SQL thing, you can actually put a JSON object into a relational, you know, table column and it's totally okay. Uh, unlike before, it used to actually store it as like a large string, but now it's actually stored safely as binary. So we can actually see when we come down here, as we can see here, we have this complex type, which is basically the structure of your JSON object when it goes into your column. So essentially it's not no SQL, no SQL with no rules per se. You still have to sort of say what the structure of your JSON is gonna look like, and that's right here. But you don't need any type of primary key. You don't need anything of that sort. You just need the structure and then that goes right here. And then on your model creating, it's just gonna have this two JSON so that it knows that in this column, it's gonna be turned into the JSON data type. And they're basically giving you all the basic CRUD operations with the JSON data type. So here, you know, you can filter on it, do whatever you need. You can go into that complex type and also like it says here, use it as a filter. So you are able to go into here and use that. So that's essentially why you need to have this modeled out because otherwise it wouldn't know what the heck is inside your JSON object if it just allowed sort of any type of document to go in there. And then finally, if you already have an application that uses JSON via the NVAR char, which is what I was mentioning before, where it was stored as a string, so it was an NVAR char, it will now automatically get migrated to JSON for EF Core 10. So don't worry about that if you are already using the previous version 
of this. Now it will get updated to the JSON data type going forward as of EF Core 10. So now let's continue. Now we get to the link and SQL translation section. Essentially here, what they did is they revamped the way link is converted to SQL when you pass a list as a filter, specifically in the contains function. And that's what they sort of show here is that here, when you have this list and you pass it in as a list, a uh, link to SQL didn't really convert in a way that was very efficient and they didn't really like it. So here in detail, if you're a little bit more nerdy about link to SQL translation and what goes on, you know, in the background, uh, you can go through here in this article and they explain it in depth, kind of how they've gone from previous versions to Entity Framework 8 and then 9 and now to 10 and how they've kind of gotten to their final version that they think is a better way uh, to translate, you know, those lists as filters. And finally, we get to something that's maybe a little bit not as nerdy, uh, but we get to two new link methods, uh, which are going to be left join and right join. And I actually just did a full video about these awesome two new link methods. Uh, so click up here on the card if you want a, a more in-depth uh, look onto these new methods, how they work. If you guys forgot what a left and right join are, I also talk about that. So go click on that video and check it out and then come back here and watch the rest of this video if you want. Um, but they are just very easy to call and the left join and the right join are exactly the same. So you'll have your primary table here. You call your left join or right join. Then you're gonna have your secondary table, the table that you want to join. And then you're gonna put the foreign key of the primary table. And then you're gonna have your primary key of your secondary table. And then you're just going to join them and map them to a, you know, join data object. And then that's it. That's all you got to do. And then as long as you understand what a left versus a right join is, you should expect the correct data to come back to you. And that's very easy versus the old way of doing it, which took a select many group join and default of empty, like they mentioned here. But those are the two new methods that we're getting in EF Core 10 for link. And then down here, there's just a few query improvements as well as bug fixes. If you guys want to go more in depth on these, you guys can come to the article, but there's nothing too substantial in these, just tweaks and minor things that you probably don't have to think about. And now moving along, since we have the new JSON data type, well, they wanted to tweak how we use the execute update uh, function. So if we go down here, we see that we have that same JSON data type here with the complex type. And essentially all they did is for the execute update async. So for those of you that know what this is, I hope you do. It's basically an edit. So instead of having to retrieve something from the database and then edit it and then send it back, this just does it all in one go without having to make two trips. You just make one. So it basically can do an execute and update async. So they basically just added the ability to also work with the JSON data type right here. And then staying on top of the execute update async, basically now it, you can do a non-expression Lambda. What does that mean? Essentially, instead of having to do an ugly expression tree, if you wanted more functionality when you were wanting to do the update async. So before you could obviously chain multiple set properties. And then it wasn't very easy if you wanted to do some conditionals, right? If depending on this or this, we want to set this property, you would have to create an expression tree. And this is not the easiest thing to do, and it's hard to read. So now what they've done is essentially they allow you to just use nice C sharp inside your Lambda expression. So you can do your if statements, you can do whatever you need to do and then set things as you see fit. And you can work with multiple properties to set and things of that nature. So I think this is a very welcome change. But really quick, if you guys found this video helpful, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my other amazing .NET content that I have for you guys. And now to the last feature that I want to highlight, these are named query filters. So for those of you that have maybe worked in this, you might have come across this common pain point and that's what they're fixing with these query filters. So first of all, what are query filters? So basically, if you have your entity, your table, you will have some sort of filters that are automatically applied to any queries that go into these entities. So you could have one like this, where it's you want your soft deleted to not show, or if you have certain IDs that you want restricted from seeing some data without having to explicitly have that attached to every link query. The problem before was if you had multiple of these, you could only chain them with an and, and you couldn't just explicitly say, I want this one, or I want this one, or I don't want this one, but I want this one. You know, you had to either take them all or leave them all. So it looks something more like this, where it has a query filter and then you would just have an and here and then you would have like your tenant ID, right? So there was no way to control it further, 
So now with the named query filters, they changed it. So now you can specify on an entity that it has this query filter that is for soft deletions. So, you know, you have data that's soft deleted, but it still exists in your database. You want that automatically filtered out without needing to be specified in your link query every time. Or you're looking at some specific ID and some restriction that you just automatically want to filter out in the background without needing to specifically specify it in the given query. And now the way that you would do it is you can specify it here. So you give it a name and you add your filter and then you give it a name and you have your filter, right? And these are all specified here as attached to this entity. And then when you actually go to your link query, you can just tell it to ignore a specific filter by passing in, you know, a list of strings. If you have a bunch of different filters, you pass in the ones you want it to ignore and then your query will process as normally. So I think this is a very cool fix. Uh, to this common pain point for a lot of people that use query filters. But that's all the awesome new updates coming in EF Core 10. Which one's your favorite? Let me know in the comments section. And if you want to go further in depth on the left and right join methods, click this video right here and I'll see you over there.